Welcome back to Brain of Ways, a weekly podcast about epilepsy, by epileptics, for epileptics, and their caretakers. I'm your host, David Clifford. In this episode, we will talk through febrile seizures, a scary but common situation often found in children caused by a high fever. But first, let's hear a new feature. In May 1973, Elton John would return to France to record the follow-up to his second straight number one album, Don't Shoot Me, I'm Only the Piano Player. The new album produced, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, would become a runaway smash and go on to sell 30 million records worldwide. Tonight, Behind the Seizure. The world would be forever changed by Sir Elton John's hits. Candle in the Wind, Benny and the Jets, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, and the song that would later become Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting. interrupt Elton. It's okay, I'm not getting anywhere with this. We finally found a neurologist that'll treat you on the weekends. Great news. These seizures are getting ridiculous. So, which day then? Hmm? Do you want to see him on Saturday or Sunday? Saturday night's the night I like. You sure? We have that gala on. Saturday's all right for fighting. You got it. I'll get the neurologist then. And with that, Elton John and Bernie Taupin knew they had a hit. If you're new to Brain of Blaze, I just want to say that I'm not a medical expert. I'm just someone that has struggled with the ins and outs of epilepsy for almost three decades. My hope is that this podcast can provide insights that listeners just cannot find through existing support structures. In a previous episode about the most likely types of triggers for seizures, I described that a child exhibiting a high fever might experience a febrile seizure. After a little introspection, I feel that I did not give the term the priority it deserves, as I just threw it out there with little explanation, followed by a joke. If I wanted a joke, I'd follow you into the john and watch you take a leak. I believe there are a couple of reasons for my vague and uninteresting representation of this condition. First, as I am not an expert, I find it hard to give details regarding epilepsy that I have not personally witnessed. Second, and more importantly, I found it quite uncomfortable to talk about epilepsy in children. Some of you may remember my beautiful four-year-old daughter from her cameo in an earlier episode. Hello there. And then, tell me your favorite color. Pink and purple and gold. Silver too. Okay, and then how old are you? Four. And then, uh, who's your favorite person? Um, you. Oh, that's very nice. What about mommy? You. <laughs> okay. What about mommy, though? Mama, too. The thought that she might inherit a disorder against which I have spent most of my life fighting scares me tremendously. Here's the thing, though. The fight against epilepsy isn't about me. It's about all of us. I realize to be a better advocate for epilepsy, I need to discover, learn, and teach all aspects of epilepsy, and not just focus on the portions in which I feel comfortable. Mind you, there are a lot of you dealing with children in epilepsy. Of the 3.5 million people living with epilepsy in the United States, it is estimated that 470,000 are minors. Miners, not miners. You lost me. Hopefully this discussion will also help me understand what some of you experience every day. We'll talk through female seizures in more detail right after this special announcement. Now that hot. <laughs> hey kid, you gotta wear your helmet. Ah, mister, I don't wanna. Son, 
You can really listen to that referee. <sighs> <coughs> Who are you? Why, that's Milton Beef O'Malley, MVP quarterback of the American Gridiron Football League. Golly, what are you doing here on our playground? I'm here to remind you, your friends, and all the other little nail biters out there, that head trauma is still one of the leading causes of epilepsy. Thanks, Beef. Hey, kids, huddle up. Okay, but let me go get my helmet. So when you hit the field this autumn, make sure to wear your leatherhead helmet. Hi! 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 Your brain will thank you. Remember, don't dread the Leatherhead. We're back and we're talking about febrile seizures. Febrile seizures are generally defined as seizures occurring in children, typically six months to five years of age, in association with a fever greater than 38 degrees Celsius or 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, who do not have an evidence of an intracranial cause, for example, an infection or head trauma or epilepsy. Another definable cause of seizure, like electrolyte imbalance or hypoglycemia, or drug use, or a history of an a febrile seizure. Febrile seizures are the most common neurological disorder in children, affecting 2 to 5% of children between 6 months and 5 years of age in the United States and Western Europe, with a peak incidence between 12 and 18 months. Wait, does that mean if my child has a febrile seizure, they're an epileptic? No. Epilepsy is an umbrella diagnosis given to a host of disorders whose symptoms include repetitive seizures. Only approximately 40% of children who experience one febrile seizure will have a recurrence or another febrile seizure. Do febrile seizures cause long-lasting brain damage? According to the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke, quote, there is no evidence that short febrile seizures cause brain damage. Large studies have found that even children with prolonged febrile seizures have normal school achievement and perform as well on intellectual tests as their siblings who do not have seizures. Even when the seizures last a long time, most children recover completely." End quote. What should I do to prevent a high fever? As you can imagine, as our child's fever grows higher, Worries of a febrile seizure recurrence increases as well. In addition to using ibuprofen to fight the high fever, try these steps to decrease a fever. Drinking plenty of clear fluids to replace fluids lost by sweating. Use either water or an oral rehydration solution which contains electrolytes. Avoiding hot water bottles or electric blankets which may raise the body temperature further. Keep clothing and blankets to a minimum. Changing clothes and bed linen frequently. And of course, ventilate the room. An old wife's tale promoted in my mother's day was to place the child in a cold or even ice bath to ensure the fever comes down. These days, this is definitely not recommended. A cold bath might decrease the child's skin temperature, but might actually increase the child's internal core temperature through shivering. In a bath is also the last place you want to have a child if they do have a seizure. What should I do if my child has a febrile seizure? According to the John Hopkins All Children's Hospital website, you should try to stay calm, gently place the child on the floor or the ground, remove any nearby obstacles, Lay your child on his or her side to prevent choking. Loosen any clothes around the head and the neck. Watch for signs of breathing problems, including bluish color in the face. Try to keep track of how long the seizure lasts. 
and call your doctor for an evaluation when the seizure is over. You should seek emergency medical care if your child has a febrile seizure that lasts more than five minutes. The seizure involves only certain parts of the body instead of the whole body, has trouble breathing or turns blue, isn't responding normally, or has another seizure within 24 hours. Personally, I want to leave you with this last note. I really appreciate you forcing me out of my comfort zone to research and host this episode. I think I learned something more about our fight against epilepsy, something which I wouldn't have unless I was pushed. For you parents out there that have true experience watching a child go through a febrile seizure, did I miss something? Meanwhile, if you have any other questions or comments regarding this or any of the other episodes, I invite you to reach out to us on brainablaze.com or Twitter at brainablaze. We would love to hear from you. If you like this episode, consider subscribing or even helping us out by providing a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever you download your content. One small click really does help. See you next time. (laughs) (laughs) I like the incredible life.